Welcome to the August 3rd, 2020 Frankfurt Village Board meeting. We call this meeting to order and we ask our clerk, Brian Fury, to take the roll, please. Mayor Holland. Here. Trustee Borelli. Here. Trustee Clavio. Trustee Farina. Here. Trustee Ogle. Here. Trustee Petro. Here. Trustee Severia. Here. Clerk Fury is here. Attorney Mahoney. Here. Attorney Lamar. Present. Chief Barica. Present. Village Administrator Pisha. Present. Assistant Administrator Cook. Present. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item on our agenda is what we call the unanimous consent agenda. All items on the unanimous consent agenda are considered uh, routine in nature and will be voted on after a single motion. If any of the trustees want to remove any of the items from the consent agenda or to discuss them uh, more thoroughly, uh, then we'll just take that item off the consent agenda. So I first ask, do any trustees want to remove any items from the consent agenda? Mayor, yes. Can we uh, remove uh, number C, Planning Commission Report number one, Act and Law for America? Yep. We'll take that off and we'll discuss that separately. Anything else? Then I would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. We have a motion by Trustee Ogle and a second by Trustee Petro. And we do want the people here in our audience this evening uh, in the boardroom and the audience at home on the internet or on the television to know something about the items we're passing. So we'll go over each one of them briefly. Uh, the first one is the approval of the minutes from our last meeting on July 20th. The second is the approval of the bills and we'll go to Trustee Severia for a report on those. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Bills tonight total $606,892.15, made up of $362,097.59 of the general corporate fund, $124,990.64 of sewer water operation maintenance, $5,988.25 for sewer and water extension, and finally, we have $113,815.67 to Henderson and Son for the North and West Treatment Plant Abandonment. This concludes the bills for this evening. Thank you, Gene. And then we have two items from our plan commission, and we'll go to Trustee Petro for a report on those. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We have e economy, massage and wellness special use at 301 North White Street. The appli applicant proposes to relocate her existing business from Frankfurt Square to 301 North White Street in the H1 Historic District. To accommodate the proposed operation at the new location, the applicant seeks the granting of a special use permit for a massage establishment. At the July 23, 2020 public hearing on the project, the Plan Commission forwarded a unanimous 6-0 recommendation to the Village Board to approve the special use request. So the motion is to accept the plan commission recommendation, waive the first and second readings, and pass an ordinance granting a special use permit for a massage establishment for Equanimity Massage and Wellness located at 301 North White Street in accordance to the reviewed plans and public testimony and conditioned upon the door to the unit remaining unlocked while in use. The second item is Crown Center Lot 2, Major PUD Change Ordinance. Crown Center of Frankfurt, LLC, the applicant and owner of the existing Crown Center building, as well as the last remaining undeveloped parcel in the Garden Gate Crossing Shopping Center, proposes to construct a multi-tenant office building. The subject property is generally located south of the southwest corner of LaGrange Road and Lincoln Way Lane. A multi-tenant office building was previously approved on the subject property in 2011, however, was superseded by a major PUD change for a multi-tenant retail building in 2016. Approval of a new major PUD change is requested to accommodate the proposed office development. At the July 23, 2020 public hearing on the project, the Plan Commission reviewed the site, landscape, architectural, photometric, and signage plans for the new office development. 
the Plan Commission forward a unanimous 6-0 recommendation to the Village Board for approval of the major PUD change subject to several conditions. The motion is to accept the Plan Commission recommendation, waive the first and second readings, and pass an ordinance approving a major PUD change for the Crown Center subdivision to permit the construction of an 8,183 square foot office building on Lot 2 in accordance with the reviewed plans and public testimony and conditioned upon final engineering approval, utilization of modular size brick, and modification of the uniform sign plan to comply with the village ordinance regarding minimum allowable wall sign area. Thank you. Thank you, Jess. And those are all of the items on the consent agenda this evening. So before we discuss them and vote on them, is there anyone in the audience who wanted to make a comment to the board about any of these items? Uh, any questions or comments from the trustees? Then we'll go to our clerk, Brian Fury, for the vote. Trustee Farina? Yes. Trustee Petro? Yes. Trustee Severia? Yes. Trustee Ogle? Yes. Trustee Varelli? Yes. Motion carries. Then we removed one item from the consent agenda, so we'll go back to that item right now, and we'll go back to Trustee Petro for a report on it. So before us is the Trafton Multiple Variances located at 115 West Nebraska Street. The applicants, Richard and Julie Trafton, proposed to construct a new detached garage in the rear yard and replace the driveway on the residential property located at 115 West Nebraska Street within the downtown historic district. To accommodate the proposed improvements, the applicants seek the following variances. An accessory structure setback variance from 10 feet to 5 feet along the northern property line, an accessory structure setback variance from 5 feet to 3 feet along the eastern property line, an accessory structure height variance from 15 feet to 20 feet, and a pavement setback variance from 5 feet to 0.5 feet. At the July 9, 2020 public hearing on the project, the Plan Commission forwarded three unanimous 7-0 recommendations to the Village Board to approve the accessory structure variance request to permit the construction of the detached garage and a split six to one recommendation to approve the pavement setback variance request for the driveway. The motion is to accept the plan commission recommendations, waive the first and second readings, and pass an ordinance granting the following multiple zoning variances to the residential property located at 115 West Nebraska Street. An accessory structure setback from 10 feet to five feet along the northern property line, an accessory structure setback from five feet to three feet along the eastern property line, an accessory structure height variance from 15 to 20 feet to permit the construction of a detached garage in the rear yard of the property and conditioned upon prohibiting residential use of the garage, and a pavement setback variance from five feet to point five feet to permit the replacement and expansion of the driveway on the property all in accordance with the reviewed plans and public testimony. Thank you, Jess. Uh, with that, if there's anyone in the audience who would like to address the board about this issue, you're certainly welcome to come forward and uh, say what you have to say. We have received some correspondence on the issue, uh, and uh, so if anybody wants to say anything, that's fine. Welcome, Deborah. Um, I'll try to make this brief. Uh, I've been at all the meetings from February till July. It is a very uh, mixed reason I'm here this evening. I'm supporting the garage, but I'm also concerned about some of the stipulations that you can't really see in the approval of, of the variances. And so, the first one would be the northern lot line. And some of the drawings that I received, it's easy to see where the garage would land. On the uh, engineering drawings, it wasn't until I increased it up to 300%, because the drawing's kind of small, that I realized that, again, I'm seeing another 
replacement of the garage from the northern lot line. So I would like that to be inspected upon the foundation before it's poured. I'm not sure where it's going. And let me remind you that my house, the attachment, it's really an apartment, um, is very, very close to where the garage will be. So therefore, I have some concerns. We as a village, we have said that we need 10 feet between the house, the Trafton's home, and the proposed garage. But nowhere is my consideration from my home to their garage. So I'm really concerned about the placement along the northern lot line. At one time, we had a stake out there. I asked uh, Mr. Trafton to do that, and then it's gone. And I'm not sure why, but I'm, I'm not settled with the northern lot line um, for placement. And my property value is just as important as the Trafton's. And so I need to know that that northern lot line is right and that I'm appropriately dealt with. I asked, could we maybe change the footage between their house in their garage, maybe take it to seven and add three to the rear. But nobody, nobody wanted to address that. So I'm really concerned with the northern lot line. The next part would be the three feet along the eastern property line. Well, that's, that's as reasonable as we can get. Um, our fence line is not on our property line. It's three extra inches there. So I did contact the building department and asked them, would they be out to check for the foundation before the cement truck came? And they said, well, we don't really do that. And I was like, well, it's important to me to have it three feet, three inches off of my property line. And again, it becomes a property value for myself and for anybody else who would be moving into that particular building in time, I'm sure I'll be gone. And so I want, I, I, I really need for the lot lines to be inspected and from right on. The height is good. Um, I, I like tall garages and I like them in the old town. Um, so that's in fitting with all of the neighborhood that we have either in the H1 or the R2. And now the big one, the extended driveway. We've had a lot of water runoff from the Traftons. I understand that there are engineering plans in place and at a uh, cost to the Traftons, but I'm wondering, will the engineering plans really take place? Because we don't really have anywhere in the ordinance here mm. that the engineering plans have been a part of this project. And then I'm concerned about the village, which is us, inspecting to make sure that that engineering is in place. If you looked um, at where I'm at on uh, 110 Kansas, 111 Nebraska, the street crests at Hickory and comes straight down. And I'm kind of in the middle. During the last two big rains, I had large floods in my yard. Um, prior to that, I've always had flooding in the yard. And it seems to have gotten worse through the last three to five years, which is what we've been experiencing as an increase in rain. And I don't think they're predicting that it's gonna get any different. If anything, we're gonna have more rain. So with that in mind, the driveway, the extended driveway is about 30 feet. At one time I was told the driveway was gonna be pitched towards their house and it would run off into Nebraska. And at the last meeting I was told that was not the case. The driveway is going to go straight down Nebraska, which is a lot of pavement. No rain can exaggerate new asphalt. Now their old driveway is about 20, 25 years old, and it's very porous. 
So we haven't really seen any runoff from the driveway, but that will all be new. And so I'm asking that we go back to the, one of the drawings that we established before, where it was an architectural drawing, and that the old driveway was in place, and when it hit the fence, which is the new driveway, it showed that there was gonna be three feet from my property line, just like the garage, and I was very happy with that. That way, if something goes wrong with the engineering plants, the water can run from their driveway onto their property because there'll be some porous area there. But with a 0.5, I'm back to where I was before, just hoping that the water doesn't flood my yard. So out of all the variances, that is the one that is the harshest for me to understand because I have three feet on either side of my driveway. Back in 2004, when our ordinance was approved, we were told no, no less than three feet. I wanted to go a little opposite, you know, like four and two. Absolutely not. And that was because there was prior issues in the downtown with property owners unable to access their property because there was no lot line open to them. Like there might have been like half a foot or one foot. So three foot allows for not only water saturation, but also for maintenance and maybe even some plants. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Good evening. My name is Rick Trafton. This is my wife, Julie. I just want to clarify a couple things. I know a couple of board members stopped by earlier with some of the concerns they had, and I put them to rest. Um, the engineering study we had is going to collect 85% of all rainwater as opposed to 0% now. So I think any concerns um, Deb has, I mean, I'm more than happy to address that with her individually, but um, Robinson Engineering, who represents the village, as well as um, Rudiger and Tonelli, came up with this plan. They all agreed on it, and they think it's the best alternative to it right now, and it's going to be 85% better than what we have now. It's going to be it's going to be a great system. And as far as the driveway goes, I know um, um, Deb is saying it's it's 0.5 feet, or you know, it's actually from where the existing driveway ends right now, and and the dr new driveway is going to be put in to reach the garage. It's actually going to taper to three feet, so it's not 0.5 feet all the way. It's going to go to three feet towards the ed edge of the garage. So, and that's something. Um, I went over with Zach and Adam, and we were all in agreement that was the best way to do it, and the planning commission. And so I think everyone was on. We put those concerns to rest at the last meetings. I just wanted to let you guys know where we were on that. And, Thank you. Um, and real quick, uh, my hat's off to um, Adam and Zach. They were great to deal with. I know being a retired municipal worker myself in the city of Joliet for 26 years as a police officer, a lot of times municipal employees don't get credit for the things they do. They get a lot of blame for things they don't do. But um, just so you guys know, they did a great job. They were great to work with. And um, my hat's off to the police, as usual. It's a hard time to be a police officer right now. And um, thank you for your service. And if um, any other concerns, I'll be more than happy to address them with Deb. But I just want to be a good neighbor. That's all we want. Thanks. Thank you. So. Perhaps, uh, Jeff or Rob, you can help us with a couple of issues. Uh, one of the concerns expressed here, I, I wrote down four of them anyway, uh, but several have to do with making sure that this building isn't a foot off or isn't two feet off or that sort of thing. Let's make sure that the foundation goes in the right location. What, what can the government do to make sure about that? And frankly, I think we need some extra steps here because there's an exception being made and there's a concern about uh, uh, the issue. So why not do something extra and make sure it goes right? Certainly, Mr. Mayor. And our process for foundations is you do have a pre-pour inspection to make sure that the foundation is put, uh, it's the right shape, it's the right size, it's the right location. There's probably a discrepancy um, in terms of what level of specificity 
uh, that inspection occurs at. It's not a survey grade inspection. There is a field tolerance out there. And you know, we don't have the equipment or the expertise to be able to make those super precise measurements when you're down to uh, a very small amount. But we certainly can add some additional uh, steps to, to make sure that this one is to a level of accuracy that's as best as we can provide. Well, I, it seems reasonable <laughs> to say, if anything, if it's going to be off six inches, let's make it off six inches uh, in Deborah's favor, I, I suppose I would say. Uh, if there's a mistake, let's, <clears throat> you know, I, I think these field things are a few inches is what typically happens and can happen, and let's just make sure it goes the right way. That seems reasonable. We will absolutely do that, and uh, we can even work with the Traftons and uh, their group that's staking yeah. the property to make sure that it's staked so we have a maybe a, a higher level of definition to be working from. And, and Deborah, I hope that would help on those issues. We'll get a little, we'll get some extra testing or measuring. Or I can come out with my ruler and then you'll really be <laughs> taken care of. But, uh, and, and then the other two, as much as anything, uh, have to do with water. Okay. And uh, tell us a little about the engineering and what's, what's been agreed to here. Uh, it's really, we're here to talk about variances, but at least uh, the driveway being close and the, uh, uh, I think that's the key one, uh, that also has to do with water. And so <clears> I <throat> don't want to get off the subject too much, but maybe you can tell us something about the engineering. Right, well that's correct, Mr. Mayor. Anytime that you're building a new impervious surface, whether it be a structure or a driveway, there are concerns about uh, drainage. And uh, that was addressed uh, throughout the process and uh, to a level that I, I don't know that I've ever seen on a single uh, individual property before. Uh, what exists uh, today uh, is basically the land slopes toward um, Deborah's property uh, coming from the west and going toward the east. And the engineering plan includes uh, a great deal of structures that will pick up that water and tie it directly into the storm system out on Nebraska Street. Uh, additionally, the, the home and the new garage that's proposed has uh, gutters that tie into that system as well and take that water out to the street. So where there is no uh, real accommodation other than the natural slope of the land today, uh, the Traftons have proposed to address that situation. I think they use the number 85%. Uh, they've, they've calculated that about 85% of the water that's currently headed that way is going to get picked up by this uh, improvement. Um, the existing driveway will remain at the slope that it is, so no, no change there. Uh, and the new driveway is pitched such that it, it drains it down uh, toward Nebraska Street and that would follow the existing grade of the existing driveway area. Uh, so, and, and I heard uh, Ms. Hardwick uh, talk about there's nothing to necessarily assure that these are part of the plans. Um, our ordinance that's presented to the board here tonight uh, is in accordance with the reviewed plans and the public testimony. So we've had the plans reviewed at both Planning Commission and the Village Board, and we've heard public testimony at both the public hearing and this evening. And so we've, we've heard it very, very clearly, and it sounds like the testimony from the applicant uh, is adhering to that. So that is part of the plan, and it is something that we'll be making sure uh, gets installed. And if for some reason that was a problem, uh, we do have recourse to go back toward the applicant. <clears throat> I mean, such as not granting, uh, uh, you, can't, you can't go in your garage. Don't grant the permit until this drainage is all built. You, you the could, occupancy. You could deal with the call. occupancy permit there. Um, and if it, it turned into a situation where you needed to, to use some type of, type of legal interference, uh, you could do that and turn it into an order from, from a judge. But I don't, I, from what I've heard thus far, I, I don't I don't expect that anything like that. I just want to have people have <laughs> some comfort that we're concerned and we're going to watch this. Yes, it's, it's very clear that this is a, uh, an issue that we need to be right on top of, and we certainly will do that. And, and I must admit, uh, I have looked at the plans, uh, and I've been at some of the hearings, and 
this isn't your typical four inch drain tile that some of us put in our backyards to drain things. This is a, these are things like the city would put in. These are big pipes and uh, large openings and <coughs> all of the downspouts are tied into it. Uh, so the water that's there now is not going to go the way it goes now. It's going into these drain systems, um, which I think is good. And I appreciate it. I appreciate the extra investment, and it's substantial on your part, I know, right. on the Crafton's right, part. I just want to bring up that um, my engineer is coming out again tomorrow to stake everything out for the garage so we know the offsets are right on and everything's good. So I, like I said, I want to be a good neighbor, plus I want to make sure everything's done properly. So my engineer is going to come back and stake everything out, make sure everything is more towards me so we don't encroach on my neighbor. Doesn't have to be a lot. Just no, make sure it's not absolutely. the other way. If we're going to steer it, we're going to steer a couple more inches towards me. Yeah. So there won't be any issues. Yeah, let's I, be sure. Okay. Thank you. Other trustees? Comments? Questions? Hey, one comment. Um, you know, one, Deborah, I wanted to thank you for the pictures and, you know, your testimony here tonight as well as what you've provided through the plan commission and to the trustees. Um, and to the Traftons too, I mean, this is a unique, there really aren't that many homes that do fall in the H1 district. It's, it is a unique process, and so you do obviously have a variance process with the Plan Commission, but prior to that, the historic preservation. And what I'm happy is in place is those residential de design guidelines that are really good markers for both of those committees to follow. And I do want to, again, I know we always talk about preservation, and so having the opportunity to kind of see that come together with the design guidelines and being able to move through the process. So thank you for working with staff and applauding them for their efforts as well as the different committees that are involved in your renovation. Um, so first of all, that. And I think to, to the mayor's point and with Deborah's is everyone's just looking for a bit of confidence here because the margins are so small for, for error. And I think what was provided between staff and the plan commissions and the investment in the drainage really does give me confidence that you've actually addressed some of the, you know, runoff and water issues that do come from increased impervious, you know, um, areas more so than maybe other um, properties that we've looked at and I think this sets a, a, a nice precedence actually for um, other properties that may be faced in the downtown with similar situations. I like the idea of the detached garage because that does fit the residential um, downtown building guidelines as far as architecture goes and I do think that it will um, blend in well within that area. So I appreciate all the comments that were brought up today and I think that the discussion was robust and it does bring additional confidence to both parties around what will be being built. Thank you. Thank you. I can go next? Or, or uh, thank you. Uh, I would like to thank Trampton's um, the building in, in the downtown, the historic downtown is difficult. It's a very challenging lot that, uh, that you're on and uh, the time and effort that you've taken uh, to try to engineer that, um, you know, I, I, we really do appreciate it, and I, I think you'll have a, a beautiful property. Uh, I have some concerns. Uh, I I went out to uh, visit uh, Miss Hardwick and, and to look at the property. I like to see how everything fits. Uh, I have no problem with the height variance. Uh, I think that's great. Uh, the East property line, um, mine kind of boiled down to uh, uh, that there might be some confusion on the uh, northern. Uh, where the real northern setback is. And I think it's, it's appropriate that we have uh, extra effort applied to this. Uh, the dimensions are so small, the tolerances are so tight. Um, and if we do err, uh, again, we all have to live next to each other and we want to be good neighbors and you want to build a nice house and have a nice life you know, while you're here. Um, that we err on the side of not impacting your neighbor. Uh, and again, the tolerances are very tight when we're talking about uh, going from uh, five feet down to six inches uh, on the driveway. Um, I still have a little issue with that one. Uh, the northern one, as long as we have, it uh, uh, seems like there's a little bit of confusion on exactly where the northern property line might be. Um, but as long as that is clarified before anything goes in, and certainly before, you know, you have your engineer coming out tomorrow uh, stake those things out. I would 
uh, expect that the village would apply extra time and effort to look at this. Again, our historic downtown is a very sensitive area and uh, it's like doing brain surgery sometimes. The little slips here and there. Uh, if we're out in the other areas, we have a lot more space to work with and um, you know, changing again. I, I think you've done a uh, an admirable job on on the uh, on the drainage and and taking concern with that. The driveway pitch for the new driveway, you're putting this, these impervious surfaces in, so taking care of the water uh, is a major concern for uh, for your for your neighbor and and for us as a village. Um, I still do have some issue with the uh, uh, the six inch uh, uh, driveway to the property line. Um, I'm not sure. Okay, like it is in the in the plan, yeah. but we. dissenting vote on that on, on the plan commission and um, that that's really the only thing that, that I have uh, take issue with um, is that dimension uh, but other than that um, I I think uh, you'll do your due diligence to make sure that this is is done properly and uh, from the village side uh, that we stay on top of this uh, and make sure as the mayor has alluded to that yeah. We apply extra time and effort to make sure that this one's done right. Uh, I don't want to see it end up in a civil thing with a court, whether between neighbors or uh, between the village, uh, where we'd have to enforce something. So just make sure that all the steps are done right along the way. That's all I have, Mayor. Trustee Farina. Thank you, Mayor Holland, and uh, thank you to all who uh, share their feedback this evening. I, I do want to acknowledge the fact that you are revitalizing a 100-year-old plus home rather than tearing it down. We've seen a lot of that in our downtown historic district, and so I do applaud you for that, and I appreciate your work with the Historic Preservation Commission on even picking a historic color for your home, and the new siding looks very beautiful. I am a bit concerned on a few other items. I appreciate the acknowledgement, Mayor Holland, and my colleagues about Deborah's property and ensuring um, runoff and so forth is taken care of and it does not impact her. Uh, a different perspective that wasn't brought up tonight was the 31% lot coverage that will occur if this moves forward. Uh, we've had a, kind of a, a pendulum swing uh, downtown last several years where we've really streamlined the amount of building on lots in downtown historic Frankfurt. And I know you're in a different zone and I understand that came from 2001 when we thought maybe we'd go commercial down that block. And so you and your neighbor to the west are the only two homes on all of Nebraska, past 45, almost to Harlem, that are in that district in that particular area. Um, but I think it's impactful and it can set a precedent if we move forward with having that much lot coverage. Uh, perhaps if the proposal was just uh, the garage with some storage, I can understand, but it had that extension on top of it, then the driveway, that's just a lot of concrete for an area that we really try to focus on green and open space. And I know that uh, runoff is a huge issue throughout the downtown district because of, uh, you know, extra wide, more building. So um, I'm very concerned about that with this current proposal, um, and I, I'm uncomfortable with it at this time. That's it, Mayor Holland. Thank you, Margaret. Anyone else? Adam. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you to the Traftons for your investment in downtown Frankfurt, and, and thank you, Mrs. Hardwick, for your, your comments. I, I, I went out there and looked at the site, and I, I appreciate everything you, you brought to us in the pictures and so forth. Um, I think the extra precautions are, are definitely a good call. I think that's a good, good investment on our part. If it costs us a few extra bucks to make sure it's done right, let's do that and, and, and make sure that, you know, we don't mess up with the, the margins of error. Um, I can tell you, Mrs. Hardwick, I, I'm a civil engineer. I spent a lot of, many years in college studying it. Um, you're right, when there's pavement, the, the water flows quicker. It doesn't infiltrate, but that's why we design these pipes and, and there's a whole science behind it. It's not art, it's science. And, and there's all sorts of calculations that go into it. Look at the impervious area, the times of the concentration, channel flow, all, this, all these things. 
um, where the connection is into the sewer, into the street. And uh, if an engineer designs this, stamps it, if, if it doesn't work, uh, they could be sued. And there's, there's repercussions for that. So I, I can assure you that these, these plans, if, if they've done it right, and I, I trust that they have, um, you won't have any drainage issues. So I think we, you know, making sure that we do the inspections, everything's installed properly, um, from a design perspective, I, I think it's done right, and um, it's it's not going to add to uh, additional runoff in, in our downtown. It's going to it's going to make it better. So, and I appreciate the investment. That's a substantial one in, in the engineering uh, that the, the Trapkins made. Um, on the driveway, I'll, I'll just you know just going out there. Uh, obviously, the existing one is only six inches from the the property line. So, I guess the alternative is it sort of jogs over three. Two and a half feet, and it's sort of this awkward um, <laughs> driveway, and I think it just makes sense to taper it. Um, it s sounded like that was a compromise that the, the Traffins made at some point. Um, I, I would prefer that over this this sort of jog driveway. Um, and and again, I think your concern with that was more about the drainage, but I think I, I I'm confident that the drainage has been addressed with the engineering. Um, that's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Adam. Great, thanks, Gene. Now, our, our vote tonight is on a height variance and then three uh, setback variances. And we'll go back to Trustee Petro uh, to make the motion. Would you like me to keep them all together? Yes, they are all together here. I think that's OK. Yeah, and can we perhaps uh, break those subtractions into individuals? In the four separate ones? Well, I'm sure we can. Uh, there, can so can if you'd like to do that, let's do it. Thank, thank you. Forgive me, I'm going to do this on the fly. So the first motion would be to accept the plan commission recommendation to approve an accessory structure setback variance from 10 feet to 5 feet along the northern property line to permit the construction of a detached garage in the rear yard of the property located at 115 Nebraska Street in accordance with the reviewed plans and public testimony. Do we have a second? I'll second that. We have a motion by Trustee Petro and a second by uh, Trustee Ogle. Any more discussion on that issue? We'll go to our clerk, Brian Ferry, for the vote. Trustee Ferry. Trustee Ogle? Yes. Trustee Petro? Yes. Trustee Severia? Yes. Trustee Borelli? Yes. Motion carries. Uh, motion to accept the plan commission recommendation, waive the first and second readings, and pass the accessory structure setback variance from five feet to three feet along the eastern property line to permit the construction of a detached garage in the rear yard of the property located at 115 Nebraska Street in accordance with the reviewed plans and public testimony. Do we have a, uh, we, we have a motion by Trustee Petro and a second by Trustee Borelli. Any more discussion? And Clerk Fury. Trustee Ogle? Yes. Trustee Petro? Yes. Trustee Severia? Yes. Trustee Borelli? Yes. Trustee Farina? Motion, motion to carries. Sorry. No, sorry. Sorry. Uh, motion to accept the plan commission recommendation to approve an accessory structure height variance from five feet to twenty feet to permit the construction of a detached garage in the rear yard of the property located at one fifteen Nebraska Street in accordance with the reviewed plans and public testimony and conditioned upon prohibiting residential use of the proposed garage. We have a motion by Trustee Petro and a second by Trustee Ogle. Any more discussion? Yeah, 15 feet, right? Five feet. 15 feet yeah. to 20 feet. Yeah. Which one are we doing? Height. Height variance. 15 feet to 20 feet. I got it 15 to 20. Okay. Are we all in agreement? Yes. 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 Uh, that's the motion. Uh, any discussion? I did second it. Then we'll go to our clerk, Brian Fury, for the vote. Trustee Petro? Yes. Trustee Severia? Yes. Trustee Borelli? Yes. Trustee Farina? Yeah. Trustee Ogle? Yes. Motion carries. 
Motion to accept the plan commission recommendation with the first and second readings and approve a pavement setback variance from 5 feet to 0.5 feet to permit the replacement and expansion of the driveway on the property located at 115 Nebraska Street in accordance with the reviewed plans and public testimony. Second. We have a motion by Trustee Petro, a second by Trustee Severia. Any more discussion? We'll go to our clerk, Brian Peary, for the vote. Trustee Severia? Yes. Trustee Borelli? Yes. Trustee Farina? No. Trustee Ogle? No. Trustee Petro? Yes. Motion. Okay. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Motion carries. And that's it, right? Very well. It passed. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that brings us to the part of our meeting we call the mayor's report. And where did the mayor's report go? It's right here. Uh, the first item on the mayor's report is a very important issue. Uh, Buzz Lightyear is back. And uh, who is it? Woody. Uh, so it's Toy Story 4 at our next uh, drive-in movie at Hickory Creek Middle School. Um, and that's going to take place on Tuesday, August 11th. The gates open at 7.30, the movie begins around 8.15 or 8.30, and you must have tickets in advance because we only allow so many people to go to this thing. And it's $10 a car, and you get them at the uh, Founders Community Center, that's the Park District building in downtown Frankfurt. Uh, and it was uh, great fun uh, last time, and so we're having another drive-in movie and people stay in their cars. There'll be total social distancing uh, in that way. Uh, the Ripple program applications are due by the end of the month. Uh, hopefully people went out and kept some receipts from their spending in uh, June and July, and they have those receipts and can now turn them in to get $50 off their water bills. Uh, nice program indeed for the public and for our businesses in town. Uh, branch collection program continues. You put out your branches by the, the street, and these mean branches. It's not a bunch of just brush type stuff or your leaves or the things that I, you know, you try to sneak in there and such. Don't, you know, it doesn't go through a chipper. Uh, they're looking, that means for branches. And it's, uh, again, uh, a nice program that I think the, the village provides to the people of our community where we'll pick up the branches Yard waste material, like I was talking about, the leaves and that sort of thing, those go into the brown bags and you put a sticker on them. You have to buy the sticker. It is a form of a tax. And uh, then that gets picked up by New Way on Mondays. And uh, finally, uh, thank you very much to the people who have filled out the census form. We have 82.1% of Frankfurt households have completed uh, the census application that's done very well. Uh, census takers may be coming to your home in the future if you haven't filled one out. They will be clearly identified and don't fall into any census scams. Uh, and finally tonight, I just want to comment that uh, uh, this disease is hardly over. It's still here in our community and this COVID-19, we're seeing some positivity rates go up in the area. Uh, that's not a good sign. Uh, we want people to social distance is the best way to uh, prevent this disease from spreading. Essentially, if you don't get close to other people, it's very difficult for the disease to spread. Uh, but when you're close to people, it is possible. So think about that when you're dining or when you're uh, just around your friends and others. Uh, stay apart as best you can. And when you do get closer to people, we should be wearing a mask. We should be following the guidance that we get from the professionals. And we need to exercise caution. We do not want to see us go backwards in this fight and have to start closing things in our community. Again, the, the village of Frankfurt does not have a public health department. We rely on county, state, and federal health authorities for public health advice. 
And the one who gives us the most clear direction is the state of Illinois, and that's what we're following for our own facility and our own uh, properties, and we encourage others to follow that too. So that concludes the mayor's report, and we'll go to our police chief, John Barica, for the police department report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to remind people that it's always a good idea to check your um, credit. Uh, we've seen a lot of these IDES from the uh, Department of Employment Security scams that are going on with people taking out, uh, trying to get uh, unemployment in their name. So there's many free services on the internet as well as there's apps uh, as a way to just check your credit every once in a while to make sure that nobody has opened up something in there. And of course, if you do uh, become a victim to these, you can do an online report too uh, with Frankfurt Police. Just go to the website and you can fill out the form right there rather than having to have an officer come out to see you. But they'll do that too. I also like to ask people to slow down in their neighborhoods. Uh, it's our number one complaint we get in traffic is people speeding through neighborhoods. Uh, we have a lot of our signs up and we're trying to get data on that, but if people would just uh, do some voluntary compliance and slow down, uh, there's a lot of people at home, uh, obviously due to the COVID you talked about, that they're around and they see the people speeding, so if they would slow down. Uh, I also like to remind people to uh, keep their eyes open and if they hear anything to call the police. Um, obviously if anybody's been on social media, they've seen that we've had some of the car burglaries back in the area, including some that have people that are armed. Um, so if you do happen to see something or something's going on, call the police. Uh, we will respond. Let us take care of that. Um, and as always, to help prevent that, lock your cars, take your keys inside, and put your garage doors down. That's all I have. Thank you, John. Now for the village administrator's report, we go to our village administrator, Rob Pisha. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I uh, just want to remind residents uh, when it comes to the branch pickup that we ask you, uh, please do not put uh, your branches in the street, asking to put them in the parkway. Uh, we try to get to the branches uh, uh, through the village at least once a week, so I understand that it's inconvenient to have it on your on your parkway. But uh, with the branches being in the street, it's a hazard to other to motor vehicles, and also if it rains, you have now the the leaves and the, the debris getting clogged in the sewer. So we ask you to please keep them on on the parkway. Also for the yard waste bags, uh, please do not put them in the garbage cans themselves. Uh, the drivers will not pick the, your garbage up out of there if they see the yard waste bags in there because they're not looking for the stickers in the, in the uh, can. So just pay attention to that. Just to put the, the brown bags out by the street, they will pick them up uh, on Mondays with the rest of the trash. Also, our street resurfacing is uh, uh, going in full swing. Uh, just ask people to pay attention to when, uh, when we start doing removing the pavement. Uh, the biggest issue we always have every year is uh, we do let people know that there's going to be fresh oil down. So we would ask you to please pay attention to that when you're uh, driving on the streets as it's going on, that if you don't want to get oil on your car, you may want to avoid it until uh, it, it at least dries. So, uh, but that will be going on uh, probably through the rest of uh, the month for the street resurfacing. And that's the end of my report. Thank you, Ron. And now the village attorney's report. We go to our two village attorneys, Hannah Lamore and George Mahoney. No report tonight, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Well, thank you, Hannah. And with that, uh, we come to the part of our meeting. It's called Other Business. And this evening, we'll start with our clerk, Brian Fury. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just wanted to, uh, we have a big election coming up uh, in a couple of months. You can apply for a uh, vote by mail through the Will County Clerk's Office and bail to come out uh, at the at the end of September, so uh, get out there and, and vote. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Brian. Trustee Petro. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to recognize our village staff, especially our building department. There has certainly been a number of new permits that have been coming through throughout the summer months, and I know that they are working hard and diligently to get those approved, and we continue to work on our processes as we're updating our website and systems, too. Um, and also, I just, uh, I guess a shout out to our planning commission. They have been able to resume in-person meetings, and certainly there's been a bit of a backlog with some of that kind of waiting to come to fruition as an example of tonight's variance request. And so I just wanted to applaud their efforts and um, probably a little bit longer meetings handling some of the agenda items recently. Thank you, Jess. Trustee Severia. I just wanted to reiterate what Chief said about locking your doors. We had a car stolen in broad daylight probably a couple weeks ago, blocked from my house. Um, if you see something, say something, close your garage doors, lock your, your car doors. Um, you know, we make it easy for people. So I don't think we have a crime problem in our town, but when you, when you make it easy, people are gonna take advantage of it, so. Thank you, Gene. 
Trustee Farina. No comment tonight, Mayor Helen. Thank you, Margaret. Trustee Ogle. Mayor, I, I just wanted to, to make a very brief comment. Uh, I think we'll be discussing this at a committee coming up to uh, the Laraway Communication Center, our 911 uh, group that, that we're part of. Um, they, they met their uh, G32 board of directors uh, to approve a budget for this year and also the allocations. And the consolidation of all these 911 centers uh, was essentially forced upon all of us um, by the state um, with the understanding that it would be saving money uh, for the taxpayers, providing for 911, the, the first thing most important is that it works. You call 911, somebody picks it up and police or ambulance or, or fire is dispatched to you. That's, that's key. And uh, there was no issue really with the budget. They, they are understaffed. They have not been able to fill some positions. So if you're looking for a job, um, please, please apply for a dispatcher job. Um, but also the allocation uh, that they've come up with. Uh, uh, I was the uh, dissenting vote on that. Uh, we had a 9% uh, uh, increase uh, in our rate for this year alone uh, when our bylaws had been approved for a 5% cap every year. Um, I think it's, it's something that, that's important for us uh, that we do as, as a village board uh, and just that we do watch uh, the ex expenses. We try to make sure that we're providing great services for our residents and that also that we are watching the dollars at the same time. Um, for 911, it just absolutely has to work. Uh, our police are fire and uh, if you have a problem, you're counting on it. Uh, so uh, hopefully we can get that uh, worked out and uh, I know that our, our police chief and, and our fire chief uh, work very diligently uh, amongst other staff to uh, keep that top notch. That's all I have tonight, Mayor, thank you. Keith, the significant time that you've been spending on this issue is appreciated. Well, thank you, and Mayor. And should be appreciated by all of the residents. Uh, it's been a very difficult uh, issue, this consolidation of the 911 centers, and it's ended up costing us all more money, not less, as the state believed it would. Trustee Borelli. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just want to let people know it's National Farmers Market Week, and I uh, went out there Sunday. Uh, we had a good crowd. I saw people social distancing. I saw people wearing their masks. I appreciate our residents and the market goers doing that. Um, and I think we have one of the best around. I'm glad we moved forward and, and didn't cancel that event because I think uh, our, our residents are really taking advantage of it and uh, enjoying it. And so I, I hope to see you out there next Sunday. That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Adam. And that brings us to the part of our meeting we call public comments. Is there anyone who would like to make a comment to the village board tonight? Hearing none, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? This meeting is adjourned.